deep sea mining is the term that we use for the mining of the sea floor. Now, nobody's doing it yet, but what we do know is that there are huge volumes of the minerals and metals that we need for the energy transition. But it doesn't come without a cost. In fact, there are huge issues associated with the potential mining of the sea floor. Now, we've come here to the Natural History Museum to discuss some of those issues with Professor Richard Harrington. Well, one of the issues that we have is that the clock is ticking, isn't it? And so there's quite a lot of pressure for, uh, I mean, there's one company that have plans to be mining in 2025. We know that we will have an impact. The sites that are going to be mined are undoubtedly going to be disturbed. And in fact, they won't recover for very long periods of time, in geological time. So it's a bit like you build a, you build a town on a, on a field you're going to devastate that ecosystem. I mean, that's just fact, you will. What you have to measure is, is the impact of that going to affect the, uh, the long-term functionality of, of the organisms that you've disrupted? Without that data, we can't make that decision. But is it worth it? I mean, how much material is actually down there? Is it worth us even taking this chance? Well, it's interesting. Let's put it in perspective. The, the clarion Clipperton zone alone uh, if we look at those nodules, it contains 10 years of the world's needs of copper. It's 100 years of the world's needs of nickel. I think it's about three, 350 years of the world's manganese and, and 450 years of the world's cobalt supply. The traditional way of coming from surface mine, we know takes anything up to 20 years. I think it's an average of about 17 years. We don't really have that time. Um, the deep ocean potentially could be shorter than that. If there was a way of funding a, a big chunk of research now, it, you know, in the order of tens of millions, because it, let's face it, it's worth doing this, doing it right, then we would have that information for us to be able to make the decision based on the impact, the different impacts of a deep ocean project versus a terrestrial project. In my view, we need that before we can start to make direct comparisons. This is a uh, part of our rock collection, and you'll see from the poster here, it's rock collection from a, an expedition called the HMS Challenger Expedition that left the UK in 1872. And it was the first sort of global oceanographic survey, sort of where oceanographic science started. And they discovered the first manganese nodules. So these are, these are the nodules. They actually, when they are found on the ocean floor, they're spherical or, or ovoid, often sort of potato shaped. These are quite small, cute ones. This has been sliced in half with a, with a diamond saw. The, they start to grow, they're nucleated around something that seeds them at the middle. In this case, it's a shark's tooth. These metals are dissolved in the water, in the seawater, and somehow they get attracted to a nuclei and then form these minerals. And it's been uh, proposed that it's bacteria that help that happen. And then all the other metals are sucked in. So you've got manganese and iron oxides forming, and then things like the nickel and the copper and the cobalt are drawn out of the seawater into the, into the nodule. It's a, a really, really thorny problem. Um, and it's like all of these things, we have, in my view, have to look at this as a problem that is shared by people and the planet. So we can make the right decision for the planet alone, but that doesn't involve people. Um, but yet what we know is that we've got to arrest climate change and we've got to create a deal that is, is right for the people on the planet as well as the planet itself. So it makes it much more complicated. And so we need to make sure we factor in all of those parameters when we, when we make our final decision. So what we've just heard from Professor Harrington is that the ocean floors contain huge potential for giving us the minerals and metals that we need for the energy transition and perhaps doing so in a way that wouldn't put a lot of society and humanity at risk. However, it will put the environment at risk and there's a huge amount of research that we still need to do to give ourselves the answers to the questions that we need to be clear on before we make that decision to mine the seafloor or not. So we're looking for that research to happen now because we cannot wait in order to be able to address those risks of climate change.